Hi everybody, Timmy coming at you again. And uh, today what we're going to talk about is two of singularly the most important concepts of the human body. And for a lot of students, including the students that I teach, uh, it seems to be troublesome. So I'm going to try and simplify this for you. The two concepts that we're going to talk about today are osmosis and diffusion. Watch. Our body works on a concentration gradient. Stuff always goes from high concentration to low. And really, in a lot of ways, that's how our body works. So, again, everything in your body happens at the level of the capillary and the cell. And as we learn, capillaries are one cell membrane thick, and cell membranes are one cell membrane thick. Are you writing that down? That's revolutionary, huh? I thunked at that one up all by my lonesome one night when I was eating supper. Anyways, so watch. Again, this is really important. Because different cells do different things. They're going to need different things that are in the blood. There's a ton of stuff in the blood. Not all of that stuff is going to go into a particular cell. So if uh, this cell, who cares what cell it is right now, if it needs something from the blood, there's going to have to be a way it can get in there. So we know that you have an arterial end of the capillary. That's high in oxygen, right? Arterial blood, high in oxygen. And you need oxygen inside your little mitochondria in order to make ATP aerobically. And that's the best way to make it. So <clears throat> the question is, how does oxygen go from the arterial end of the capillary into the mitochondria? Well... It's highly concentrated in the capillary and lowly concentrated in the mitochondria. So oxygen can simply diffuse, and it goes from high concentration to low. And how much oxygen goes from the blood into the mitochondria is determined by the difference in concentration of oxygen in the blood and in the cell the mitochondria. So an example, let's say for example that you get up and you start running, I don't know, maybe to the liquor store because it's about to close. Because your muscle cells have to use, they have to make more ATP, they're going to use up more oxygen. And because they're using up more oxygen, the difference between the amount of oxygen in the cell and the amount of oxygen in the blood is going to be greater so that means more oxygen will go into the cell. And this is no joke. And no one can argue with this. No one. That metabolism dictates your physiology. And if you don't understand some basic components of metabolism, it's going to be tough to really understand how the body works. I'm not asking you to do that right now. What I'm asking you to do is just understand that stuff, in this case, it's oxygen, will move from high concentration to low. So watch. <clears throat> when you break down glucose, fat, or amino acids, one of the byproducts of metabolism is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is highly concentrated in the mitochondria, and you're not going to believe this, it's lowly concentrated in the blood. So carbon dioxide will diffuse from a high concentration to low. And at that point, arterial blood becomes venous blood. That's why it's called circulation. It's a circle, like the circle of life and other stuff. Anyways, I digress. So <clears throat> diffusion is simply when stuff stuff. And if it ain't water, it's stuff. 
stuff diffuses from high concentration to low. And here's the thing. Diffusion works both ways. If it's highly concentrated in the blood and it's lowly concentrated in the cell, it will go from the blood into the cell. If it's highly concentrated in the cell and lowly concentrated in the blood, it will go from the cell into the blood. And that's how stuff moves. That is diffusion. And many things simply diffuse. Now, <clears throat> probably one of the most important things that you will need to know is not everything is permeable. So I'll give you a, a huge example. There's a cell. Here's what cell it is. You just ate, I don't know, some Tic Tacs. And that's got sugar in it. So when you eat that sugar, it gets broken down in your digestive system, and then it gets absorbed into your bloodstream. That is going to elevate your blood sugar. These little circles are glucose. What up, G? All right. <clears throat> Write this down. Tattoo it someplace. Glucose is impermeable to the cell. Glucose cannot simply diffuse from the blood into the cell. It needs help. And that help is from our buddy, our pal, the one and only hormone called insulin. So when your blood sugar goes up after you eat a meal, your pancreas senses that and it releases the hormone insulin into the blood. Now watch. In order for glucose to go from the blood into the cell, insulin has to be released. And when it's released, this is really important. It has to bind with a specific receptor called, you're not going to believe this one, it's called an insulin receptor. It's a protein sitting on all your cell membranes. Insulin receptor, my bad. Watch. So <clears throat> why was insulin released? It was released because your blood sugar was high. What do you want to do? You want to get your blood sugar down back into that homeostatic range, 80 to 100, roughly. So if glucose is impermeable to the cell membrane, insulin's got to help. And when it does, insulin's released from the pancreas. Insulin circulates in the blood and then binds to that insulin receptor. And when insulin binds to that insulin receptor, I for insulin, that's creative. It opens up a gate. The fancy name is the GLUT4 transport protein. All you need to know is that it's a gate. And when insulin binds there, it opens up that gate and allows glucose to go from high concentration in the blood through that little gate into the cell. And <clears throat> insulin will be released until your blood sugar is back to normal. Once your blood sugar has reached 80 to 100, the pancreas no longer releases insulin. Bam. Homeostasis is achieved. Now watch. I'm going to explain to you type 1 and type 2 diabetes with two curved lines and a circle. In type 1 diabetes, a person eats sugar. Their blood sugar goes up. But the pancreas does not release insulin. 
if you don't have insulin, insulin can't bind to the gate, the receptor, and will not open up the gate. Therefore, your blood sugar stays elevated. What's the cure for that? Or what's the treatment? The treatment is these people have to inject insulin for the rest of their lives. That's type 1 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, watch it. Are you watching? In type 2 diabetes, these people in the early stages of their disease, they got insulin coming out of their eyeballs. The problem isn't that the pancreas doesn't release insulin. The problem is, what up, G? They eat, their blood sugar goes up. They got to get that glucose from the blood into the cell, right? Their pancreas senses it. Their pancreas releases insulin into the blood. They have insulin. They got a ton of it in the early stages. The problem is, is that the number of insulin receptors on a cell goes away. The result is, is they still cannot get glucose from the blood into the cell. They have insulin. They got a ton of it. The problem is, is that in order for insulin to open up that gate, it has to bind to a functioning insulin receptor. In people with type 2 diabetes, the number and sensitivity of those receptors goes away. So watch. And if you understand this, it's going to be beautiful. If you understand this, get this. If, you're, if you were a drug and you wanted to treat type 2 diabetes, what would you make the drug do? The answer is you would put more insulin receptors on the cell and make them more sensitive, right? Get these bad guys away, the ones that ain't working so good, and you put more and sensitive insulin receptors so that insulin could bind to that receptor, the functioning one, open up the little gate there, and glucose diffuses into the cell. Well, guess what? Real smart people with the tape and the pocket protectors, <clears throat> they came up with a drug called metformin. And metformin does exactly that. It increases the number and sensitivity of insulin receptors in the cells of your body, specifically the muscle cells. And here's the other thing, watch. Who gets type 2 diabetes? People who sit on their fatty acid. People who are overweight and sedentary. Those are two huge risk factors for it. And you're not going to believe this. Guess what regular exercise does to the number and sensitivity of insulin receptors? Yep, it makes them more sensitive. That's why, as a nurse, the first question you ask a type 2 diabetic is, are you exercising regularly? And most will say, yeah, or something like that. But that's how it works. So an example of facilitated diffusion is insulin, the receptor, and opening up the gate. In order for glucose to go from the blood into the cell, you got you to gotta have help. And that help is insulin. Now, <clears throat> watch. Remember. And this is really important. So oxygen, carbon dioxide, can simply diffuse. Glucose cannot simply diffuse. It needs help. That's facilitated diffusion. Now, this is really important. Write this down, tattoo it someplace, never forget it. <clears throat> if stuff can't move, water can always move. And remember, 
The goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis, a balance. So here we go. We have a capillary and a cell. And let's say that you are diabetic and you forgot to take your insulin because you were studying. Mm -hmm. So you eat some Kellogg sugar smacks, dig them, and your blood sugar goes way up. I always have to say this. I don't know why. What up, G? So glucose, bunch of it in the blood. <clears throat> in people with type 1 diabetes, they got insulin receptors. What don't they have? They don't have insulin. So <clears throat> can glucose go from the blood into the cell? The answer is no. So you got stuff in the cell. Who cares what it is? And you got stuff in the blood, all right, why, who cares, all right? But now you have more stuff in the blood. And this stuff, glucose, is impermeable to the cell. So if glucose can't move from the blood into the cell because you ain't got insulin, what can always move? The answer is water. And Here's the kicker. Water will always move from an area of a lot of water and less stuff to an area of more stuff and less water. Let me say that again. Water will always move from an area of a lot of water and less stuff to an area of more stuff and less water. If you want me to get complicated, I will. Not much, though. There is a measurement of stuff to water. And that measurement is called osmolarity. What's the goal of the body? The goal of the body is to maintain a balance. So the osmolarity of the blood has to be equal to the osmolarity inside the cell. Now, <clears throat> so the stuff and water in the cell, and it, again, it don't make no never mind what the stuff is. It's just stuff. The Osmolarity of the cell has to be equal to the osmolarity of the blood. And if stuff can't move, in this case glucose, water can always move. So water always moves from an area of low osmolarity to an area of high osmolarity until the osmolarity of the blood and the osmolarity of the cell are equal. That's osmosis. And now watch. If you understand this, you will now be able to predict the signs and symptoms associated with hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. So <clears throat> what are they? They're polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia. Hold up. You learn this. You learn this in anatomy and physiology. I'll never forget it. I think it was a Tuesday. About 11 20. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Blood, cell. In this case, I'm going to name the cell. It's called your. Hypothalamus. And your hypothalamus controls several things. Number one, controls hunger.
controls thirst. And it controls temperature. We'll talk about this later. The ones I'm interested in are hunger and thirst. So watch. When your blood sugar is high, is it just high in your thumb? Like a student could email me or call me up. Hey, Tim, I can't come to class today. My blood sugar is really high in my left thumb and it don't look good. The answer, of course, is no. So <clears throat> if your blood sugar is really high and you're a type 1 diabetic and you didn't take your insulin, again, what up, G? So you got a ton of glucose in your blood. If you didn't take your insulin, can glucose go from the blood into the hypothalamus? The answer is no. The only fuel that the brain can use is glucose. What does the hypothalamus control? It controls hunger. How, when do you get hungry? If your blood sugar is low. But watch. If your blood sugar is high and you don't have insulin, you can't get glucose from the blood into the hypothalamus. So what does the hypothalamus think? You're starving. So that's why you polyphagia many eats. Watch it. What is the other thing that the hypothalamus controls? Thirst. Watch it. There's stuff in the hypothalamus, so who cares? <clears throat> There's stuff in the blood. What's the goal? The goal is to maintain osmolarity. Now, <clears throat> what's the problem here? You don't have insulin. So can glucose go from the blood into the hypothalamus? The answer is no. So if stuff can't move, what can always move? Water. And water always moves from an area of a lot of water and less stuff to an area of more stuff and less water. So water, by osmosis, is drawn out of the hypothalamus into the blood to try to balance that stuff and water in the blood and the stuff and water in the cell. So essentially, what are you doing? You're removing water from the hypothalamus. And embedded in the cell membrane of the hypothalamus are little receptors called osmoreceptors. And when water gets sucked out of there, that will trigger those osmoreceptors and it will make the person thirsty. They will get polydipsia. Bam. Now watch, and this is really important. Anytime you add water to the bloodstream, and it don't make no never mind how you do it. If you drink water, what do you got to do in 15 minutes? You got to pee. So if their blood sugar is high, water is getting sucked out of not just the hypothalamus, but all cells of the body. So all of the cells are getting sucked, the water sucked out of them. The result is, is that you increase your blood volume. And any time you increase the amount of water in your blood, you increase your blood pressure. And any time you increase your blood pressure, it makes you go pee pee more. So that's why diabetics pee a lot.
when their blood sugar is high. And here's the other thing. They're not peeing a lot because they're drinking a lot, although that does help. They're peeing a lot because the water is getting sucked out of all of the cells of their body. So watch. Water is required to make all the chemical reactions inside your cell happen. You are sucking the water out of all those cells. What caused the water to get sucked out of all the cells? The high blood sugar. Why is your blood sugar high? Because you don't have insulin. So if you work in an emergency room and someone comes in with a blood sugar of 800, what are you going to need to do? You're going to need to know that you're going to have to get some insulin ready and you're going to have to start big old IVs because you are going to have to give them fluid because you have to rehydrate those cells. So as the insulin is dropping the blood sugar and pushing the sugar into the cell, it's going to pull a little water along with it. The result is they rehydrate those cells. So, you know, when you're in clinical, in your health alterations class, you need to understand that it is fluid resuscitation. You got to give them IV fluids and you got to give them insulin to get their blood sugar down. And if you don't understand osmosis and diffusion, you will never understand that. I hope that helped and look for more of my videos. I'm going to do a video on the function of insulin. And if you understand the functions of insulin, then you will understand why diabetics lose weight, um, why diabetics develop ketoacidosis, why their sodium and potassium levels are off. But if you don't understand the functions of insulin, you're going to have to remember all that stuff. And it's really quite, it's that simple. And Look, this wasn't that hard, right? And hopefully you learned something. All right, uh, guys, study, keep working hard, and it will be okay for you.